In this particular lesson, we're going to be looking at setting up the shader for our background environment. So, and we're also going to be looking at setting up, setting up some light fixtures. We're also going to be looking at baking up, baking out our GI so that each time we, we render, we don't have to actually calculate our light cache over and over again. It's a quick solution to actually, you know, save a lot of render time. So let's quickly go to our hypershade. And I'm going to graph the network that's currently, the shader that is currently attached to our background. Now, this is a shader we have here. I think the, the, shader is, the shader is working. We just need to tweak it a bit to get, you know, the effect we're looking for. I'm just going to click a quickly texture input. You can see that this is this is the texture I'm using. It's basically I'm I'm just trying to repeat the texture pattern on this on this particular environment. So we're not doing anything really fancy here. What I'm going to do now is to create a bump map. Right now there's there's no bump map for the shader. It's just a straight up shader with a diffuse color and I'm using a remap HSV node to bring down our saturation and our hue so that we we can focus on just the value input of our par of our parameter of our value parameter so let's click our bump let's quickly navigate to our bump section this is the bump so i'm going to quickly create another remap hsv node quickly pipe in my color my texture color I'm gonna bring down my hue also bring down my saturation then I'm gonna quickly go to our shader and connect that to bump I'm gonna bring down my bump level to something to about 0 0.035 0 0.034 and activate bump shadow I'm quickly gonna also change my uh, BRDF type to WAD and then quickly go to my reflection my option section what I'm trying to do is actually increase my cutoff threshold from 0.10 to 0.001 so basically we get more defined reflections I'm gonna quickly save my scene so that that's our basic shader setup for our environment so what I'm going to do now is to just do a quick render and I'm going to quickly also bake out our GI so that we don't have to, you know, render our light cache over and over again. So I'm going to go to my render settings. I've got my brute force set. Obviously brute force, you can't really bake out brute force. It's, it, it basically just, you know, it's a real time GI calculation. So I have actually to bake out your... Uh, light cache just navigate to a folder where you want to save your light, light cache once you've actually saved it like I've done you actually to read to read your light cache back you go to your mode read from file what you now need to do is to just copy the path from here and browse to where your file is and just connect your file so each time Maya calculates it's GI. It's always going to be reading from this file. It's not going to calculate it over and over again. So that actually works. But bear in mind that if you change your light settings on your light setup and you move your lights around, you might actually have to bake in your GI. So this is something that I do uh, over and over again. But in this particular case, I don't have to, you know, worry about that because the GI is going to be read from a file and I'm only working on a single camera. Uh, if if you're moving, working on a cam uh, uh, continuous camera, you can actually use your camera path, which I've always used by default. So that's all about our GI. Now let's let's do a quick render and see how our environment is shaping in relation to our character. I'm just going to quickly pause the lesson while we wait for the render. So this is the render. As you can see, we're we're getting something quite quite interesting. Our environment is, is working. This is a very low sample render. Uh, we can see our light, our directional light is coming from here. But what we're going to be doing 
in the next few chapters is that we're, we're going to actually export some of our geo via alembic to the nook and create a bit more you know see if we can actually help emphasize certain aspects of our of our environment like creating light effect maybe creating a bit more glow in certain areas or creating adding a bit more fixtures adding a secondary texture to the background here just something interesting so we're going to be doing the bulk of the work in addressing some of the issues of our background in in nook let's quickly go to our buffer just want to see what we have so we've got quite a lot of light select here in the last chapter uh, uh, lesson we looked we, we saw how we created various light selects to to help us you know make the lighting process a lot more easy in comp we may not use them but it, it's it's always good to to have them just in case you you might need to use them this is our specularity our reflection and obviously our RGB so what we're going to be now that we're looking at our environment like I said our environment is looking good there's nothing really you know jumping out at me uh, when we actually get to get to Nook we're going to be creating some volume rays in Nook we can we can create those volume rays in, in V-Ray for Maya but I think it's best to leave that in Nook since this is just like uh, some of some of the effects that can be some of the volumetric effects can be created quicker and easier in Nook as it might take a while to render this so what are the next thing I want to add to my to my environment shader I want to now start set quickly set up my light fixtures I've got some lights at the top here uh, those fixtures those light fixtures I will enable them just before I I do my my final render I just want to be able to you know see I just want to be able to see what what they are right now uh, especially this section here it depends on what the camera says uh, so let, let's let me quickly move this here and I'm just going to quickly rotate that so that it is it is actually coming from from our picture but the question is do we see this in our camera if we actually see this in our camera then it, it becomes you know it becomes obvious that we need to we need to set that picture let's go back to our camera view and see what our camera sees so basically we, we don't really see it that much so I'm not really going to be bothered about setting up you know set, wasting render time when we don't actually see those particular features so what I'm going to do is to now you know further refine our background shader and give us a, a bit of a you know a bit of a, a bit of quality in terms of what we see and, and what we don't see let's go back to our hyper shade in this but in this instance I can you know create a layered shader just to give us a bit more a bit more uh, variety in this in this shader so I'm going to just gonna quickly uh, click a layered shader a la layered texture pardon me and um, I could just quickly pipe in some sort of texture or random texture or a noise and uh, just to make this texture interesting so in the next chapter we're going to be looking at finishing up the the shading and the texturing of our environment and we're going to be exporting parts of our geo via alembic into nook and then we're going to be spending the last few chapters here just to give us a bit more texture variation for our background then we're going to look at exporting geos into uh, using alembic so that we can add a bit more fixtures in nook then we're going to be looking at finaling our scene because this is going to be the last setup before we go before we do our final render so continuing on our on our shader setup i'm going to quickly go to our hyper shade so this is a network graph network that a uh, shader network that i'm using for our background this is our layer texture uh, I'm la layering these two textures to give us a bit more a bit more variation in 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 our texture. So I'm going to see how much I can affect that. I'm just going to use the color, shift the color, shift the uh, alpha just a bit so that we can see a bit more of the uh, underlying texture. 
so we've got our bump and we've got our reflection so that that that's working fine so that's that's the simplicity of, of that shader what i'm going to do now is to do a quick uh, i'm going to do a region regional render i'm going to bring in my very buffer and do a quick regional render just to see you know i, I don't want to render the whole thing i just want to see a certain section that will give me an uh, give me an idea of how you know this is looking so i'm going to select this region and pause the video and then do a render and then we'll, we'll compare these two sections to see how how what difference this is making so this is our render with our new uh background environment uh, as you can see the textures are looking a lot more interesting compared to what we had what we had before we're getting a lot more breakup and a lot more saturation so i think this this background is working nicely uh obviously when we get when we get to once once we get to nook uh, uh, in the compositing stage when we start you know balancing the colors and balancing the levels we should be able to get something quite quite interesting so what i'm going to do now is to export certain elements via alembic into pre in preparation for you know if we have to do any projection in nook or if we have to you know set up custom uh custom uh projections in terms of you know camera projections in nook depending on what we want to create but it's always good to have the option so i'll i'm just going to quickly show you what i've done in finalizing this scene because this is the last stage we're going to be in before we leave maya uh the first thing i've done is to look into my gi i've i've actually baked out one frame of my light cache so that I don't have to calculate light cache each time I want to set up a render. All you need to do is to just go to uh, save, copy the path, and browse to where you saved your file, and just load your VR mesh, your, your VR cache. Pardon me. So b basically, that's that's all you need to do. So that's in file. So when I render, I'm only re just rendering, and it's reading the GI from file. Obviously, I'm, I'm also using brute force, and br brute force is a real-time calculation. There's no cache associated with with with, with brute force, so it's just mainly the, mainly the secondary bounds I'm caching out. You can actually use light cache, light cache, and just bake out all your GI, which is quite faster. Or you could use irradiance map, uh, irradiance map, and light cache to bake out both texture maps, which, which is a way to do it if you really don't want to waste time calculating brute force so i mean how do we export the next how do we export olympic data out of out of maya uh that's quite uh, simple as of maya 2014 or maya 2013 olympic is has been embedded into maya so you can you can actually create caches quite easily there are certain steps you have to follow in order for you to export uh, geometry out of Maya using Alembic. Now to load Alem Alembic, go to on your top menu, go to pipeline, Alembic caches. You can ex open Alembic, import Alembic, replace Alembic, export all to Alembic, or export your selection to Alembic. So what we're going to be doing is to export our selection to Alembic. Uh, if you want to get any more information about Alembic you, you can actually go to the about Alembic section and it would actually provide a lot more information for you so how do we uh, export um, how do we export ge geometry via Alembic now there's two ways to do it the first thing I'm going to do is to export my camera I'm going to select my camera but you have to be very careful because if there's any groups within if there's a hierarchy within a group you need to actually collapse the group and actually select the specific object you want to export so let's quickly go to our outliner i'm going to select my camera that's my camera now if this particular if this camera was in was in a group i will have to actually go into the group and select the specific camera so because i'm working on my perspective cam i'm just going to quickly select perspective cam and go to Alembic or pipeline Alembic cache export selection to Alembic uh, a menu comes up I'm just gonna say right now I'm, I'm actually focusing on frame 131 it, it's probably good it's probably just gonna export the whole frame 
but 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 that's not the problem i'm gonna actually i'm gonna limit it to a certain frame i don't want the whole frame so 131 to 13 those are the frames i'm gonna export just one single frame and the next stage is quite important i need to i need verbosity no normals i don't need any uvs strip name spaces wall space that's very important whole frame geo right visibility filter euler rotation if, you, if you've got any animation but i don't have an animation i always leave that by leave that up by by for, by default pardon me so basically that, that's that's all that's all i've that's what you need to do to export your object into Olympic uh, through Olympic. So let's export our, our selection. It's going to quickly go to a default Olympic cache. I'm going to create my own custom folder because I, I don't want to use that uh, uh, default folder. So I'm just going to go back to my directory, Maya, space environment, and I'm going to create my cache. A B C. I'm gonna call it A B C cache, and I'm gonna quickly call this cam main and export, and I would export my camera straight via Olympic. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is select certain geo, geo, geo. I'm gonna select this top geo. I'm also going to select this geo here. Just to give me a 3D representation of, of where things are. So those two geos are going to be selected. And I'm going to export those geos via Olympic as well. I'm going to once again check to see that they're not in any grouping. As you can see, we've got some grouping here. So I'm going to select specifically that geo. And I'm going to look for the corresponding geo. Select that geo and select that geo. So those are the two geos that, that I'm going to select. Once again, as you can see, I'm actually going inside the group to to export it. The reason why I'm doing that is that if you if you export it within outside the group, you might get double transformations, and it may not be representative of what it looks like in Maya. So let's quickly export our cache, our Olympic uh, uh, geo. We're going to be doing exactly the same thing, and I'm just going to export. And I'm going to say geo main. You can name it anything you want. This is just what I choose to name it. Geo main and export. So that's what you need to do to actually export your uh, geometry into Olympic. So basically, we've baked our GI. Our render settings are good to go. I've got 1 to 16, my DM sampler. And, uh, and um, I don't think there's anything else we need to do. So I will see you guys in the next lesson when we actually do our final when we do our final render and particular lesson. This is the last lesson. Uh, this is how our final render is looking like, and I think it is really looking pretty good. This is a straight up beauty with no additional comb treatment to it. Um, but before I go into you know addressing you know doing some basic grading for our uh, CG. I'm just going to talk about uh, Alumbic imp import. This is like a bo bonus to, uh, bonus lesson. Uh, I just want to, because we exported some geos out of Maya, I just want to show you guys how to import those geos into Nook. So in order for you to do to import geo into Nook, just go to, you need to, you need a read geo. Read geo. And I would actually create a read geo node. You can import obj or alumbic data by using this method so let's click our read geo what we do is that we navigate to where we um, saved our we navigate to where we saved our alumbic data so i'm just going to go to where i saved mine abc cache geo you can import your camera the same way click that and that will bring you bring up a small dialog box here just it's already pre-selected create all in one node or you can actually create separate nodes depending on what you want to achieve so i'm just going to create all in one node the beauty of this is that if i now pipe that into my scene here i've created a 3d scene here and this is a camera that i imported using the same method i can actually go back and say okay i want my camera this time and if I select my cam main, it actually brings in my camera. Simple as ABC. 
So the be beauty of this is that this is our geo as is from Nick, this particular wall, and it's in the same position in 3D space. Let's quickly go to our 3D view. So this is where our wall is in relation to our camera, and this is our wall, and it's exact same position as is as it is in Maya. It's a very clean, straightforward, no problems, and it's very efficient. So I've I've created a a, a, three, a, a card, and I'm trying to project a texture on that card. So all I needed to do was to just move my card to where my wall is. It's pretty straightforward, and I know that that's i'm not guessing that's where my card is that's where my wall is so i'm gonna go back to my to my uh viewer here and i'm gonna quickly disable our 3d geo because we don't need that that's just a way to you know show us where where our wall is and i'm gonna quickly just create some effect nothing fancy this is just like this is what's happening on the back wall here it's it's almost like you know you, you, you can add a texture you can project a te texture I've got a few textures here that, that I can swap around what I'm gonna do is to increase the effect of that so I can create some really interesting you know sci-fi effect and the good thing is that I can duplicate this effect I'm just gonna quickly duplicate my card I could duplicate the card a couple of times and just apply that texture and I can quickly translate it up let me quickly go to my 3d view and I'm just gonna translate one of them take the other one and just translate them so that they're not in the same 3d space so let's now go back to our view as you can see we're getting something quite interesting here it, it's there's so many things in, you know you, you, there's so many effects you can create just by you know using this this methodology and the the, the trick is to just know where your geo is in 3d space and you, you can just without even doing any projection here i'm just finding where my 3d space is in maya and just exporting that with Olympic and just placing cards to you know show me exactly where it is one of the things that I can also do I'm just gonna quickly go back to my 3d view let me just select my here is my 3d view so I'm gonna enable my card again my wall so we can see where our wall is again and I'm just gonna quickly duplicate that card because you raise that up move it up here let's just frame that so that we can see what we're doing I'm just gonna rotate it to rotate it just uh, control Z and that will rotate it it's it's it, it takes a while to get used to especially if you're coming from Maya when the controls are a bit more easy to understand so let's go back to our view here obviously we need to raise this up put it into our scene I'm just gonna quickly disable that we need to disable our geo here okay so this is this is it it's we need to rotate it a bit more but I, I think we, 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 we get the point of what we're trying to create. You, you can create secondary pro, uh, projections. You can create custom light effects uh, in, in, in different positions. I can actually put a card here and just to just to match my lighting effect. But within the scope of this tutorial, you know, we're, we're really focusing on, on lighting for feature film. So pretty much that, that that's all in terms of how to bring your Olympic data into Maya and, and create, you know, basic, simple uh, projection placements. So uh, this is our, so this is our final character, our final render. Uh, I hope you guys have actually enjoyed this tutorial and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to actually, you know, walk through this process and see some of the techniques that I have learned in future film. 
that would actually help you get there very quickly you know it gets really complicated um, so at this particular st at stage I, I, I can add decide to add a grade node or just you know pretty much do a color correction grade it whichever way I want but um, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. We, we'll focus on just lighting and shading and getting this out. And this is the beauty render as is. So I think this is it for this lesson. And any questions you guys have, you guys can always send me an email, and you know I'm willing to answer.